Hey, so this is Burn Me. You guys know me from uh, the Berserk videos I did. I edited together uh, the 1977 animated series. I edited together all of that into three films and uh, used some of the animation from uh, 2012 uh, Berserk anime. Berserk is one of my favorite, well, Berserk is basically my favorite story in general, and that's why I created that. That's that's the reason why I edit all those films together, and I, I just thought I would share them with people, anyone who is a Berserk fan, and uh, uh, well, wanted to see a certain take on it, and also just wanted to see the TV series more as a film. I like film a lot. I like watching something in a two hour period that has kind of a complete story to it rather than watching it broken up into a bunch of uh, TV episodes. And, and so with my edit I took a lot out and I was more focused on trying to get to the main story. The story between Guts and, and Griffith. And uh, that's that's my favorite part of Berserk. Whether whether I was reading the manga or watching the animated series, it, it was always the relationships between Guts, Griffith, and, and Casca that I always thought was the best. What I want to see looking forward in the manga is I want to see the confrontation between Guts and Griffith. I mean, there's plenty of great little subplots and everything in Berserk, but the end of the day that's the main story and that's what I want to see in the future and ex that's what I'm most excited about to see coming from Berserk if, if it does ever get completed or anything like that. But anyway, I also know a lot about exercise and I, I really enjoy exercising. So I thought I would make my first vlog, vlog on uh, exercising. So we can take a look and see what I do and I can try to explain to you why I do what I do. By the way, I'm a vegan. I've been a vegan for about a year. It hasn't been a very difficult thing for me, but it's been rather easy. I'm not really going to go into it, but if you do the research, eating animals in any way just doesn't really make any sense and we can basically get all the nutrients our body needs from just eating plants and vegetables and whatnot. So the first exercise I do basically every single day is these kicks right here. One of my favorite exercises, I the way I do the kicks is I, I do a side kick and then a front kick and then I do the side kick again but focus more so on keeping my hips um, keeping my hips centered the whole time on the second wave of kicks I do 10 reps each uh, I do 10 reps for each leg but yeah I, I do three sets of 10 for each movement and it just really opens your hips for anything you're gonna do and I just it doesn't really matter how mobile you are or anything like that whatever your range of motion is doesn't matter just lift your legs up and kick and you'll probably improve over time if you keep doing it I, I do it every single day so it's it's worked for me
after that, this I don't actually do this every day, but I just felt like doing it for this uh, particular day. It's a squat position, and then so what I do here is I get a kettlebell and I, I get in a squat position and place the kettlebell in one arm, squat down, and then raise up. And this is to really help me in the bottom position of an overhead squat. A very challenging position and and that's I really enjoy doing exercises that are, are, are challenging. Um, not just in terms of how much weight you can lift, but more so testing both the strength and the flexibility and mobility of your body and really just being able to put yourself in any position possible. After this, um, I just got a PVC pipe. I put my grip, uh, snatch grip, which you know none of you may know anything about it, but anyway, and just rotating forward, back, forward, back to help open up my shoulders for the future exercises I'll be doing today. So I'm going to start out with the overhead squat. This is something that most lifters don't really want to do. They There's the mentality of, you know, maximum load and the popular idea is doing things like back squat and deadlift. and only really practicing overhead squat if you are a weightlifter who does snatch and clean and jerk. And to get good at the overhead squat or overhead position, just do more snatch, do more squat. But uh, I've been taking a bit more attention to it and my whole method of exercise is is completely different from Olympic weightlifting. I'm sort of focusing on bodybuilding, but I care much more about athletic ability. So, and I'm also not concerned about necessarily increasing the size of my muscles. It's mainly just about training my body to be athletic while Inherently, it's it's gonna look good too, like what bodybuilders go for, but uh, won't be quite as uh, bulky or anything like that. Not really going for that. Almost trying to look more just like like a actor or something, a Brad Pitt type body, but ultimately a little bulkier. Funny thing is how much strength doesn't really matter in terms of having a good looking physique. A lot of people think that you have to get stronger, you have to make gains, you have to gain weight or lose weight if you want to lower your body fat and that that's the only way to make progress and be successful from a fitness perspective. But that's not really true at all. You don't really need to get yourself stronger the most important thing is really just making yourself more efficient in whatever movements you do and if you can increase the load then go ahead and increase the load otherwise just keep trying to master the movements and that's the most important aspect to exercise one thing that uh, I do every day that I, I'm not showing here. Uh, I, I might do that some other day, but I run sprints every single day. Probably, it, sprints are kind of becoming my most favorite exercise. It's such a basic, fundamental athletic ability. and. It's ridiculous how people don't do them. So what I do for my sprint workout is I 
simply sprint about 150, 200 meters six times. Rest in between really doesn't matter. Ultimately, the reason why it doesn't matter is because your intensity level will just be affected based upon how much of a break you take. If you take short breaks, your intensity is going to drop because you're no longer able to push your body as hard as you could if you rested an extra 30 seconds or an extra minute. So if you rest less, you're going to work on your endurance. If you take a longer rest, you'll be able to increase the intensity and move faster. Variety is the best, so just play around with it. Sometimes take a longer break, sometimes don't. But at the end of the day, these sprint workouts are amazing because I'm basically just running six times short distance no matter what whether I'm running 50% or 100% my speeds pretty high it's it's much much higher than a, a jogger would be running because I'm running such a short distance and it's still extremely effective on your heart rate it's in, in all honesty you could run six sprints in about five minutes maybe 10 minutes if you're really taking longer breaks and running around 100%. And ultimately, you'll get the same effects as though you were jogging for 30 minutes. So, one, I mean, it's, it's a very efficient use of your time. And you're essentially getting the same results that you would get from just being a basic runner. So, I mean, a lot of times, unless you're trying to compete to be some kind of uh, long distance runner, it kind of just blows my mind that people spend 30 minutes a day or more constantly running. And it, running at such a slow pace, it, it really is just kind of a waste of time. So I, I might go more into that in the future, but sprints are amazing and uh, just not appreciated as much as they should be. And in terms of body fat percentage, that, I mean, that's one thing, one other thing that I will get into to some, to some extent. To lower your body fat percentage, it's basically just calories in, calories out. Cardio-wise, I shouldn't say that. It's, it's calories in, calories out, and then how much, how much exercise you do trying to think where to go from there. I don't, I don't want to divvy, uh, divvy too much. But I run the sprints both just from an athletic perspective, uh, athletic perspective, a lean perspective. Honestly, I mean, I get the most benefit from my lean body mass from sprints. Then after that, I, I would probably say back squats uh, or just squatting in general which is another type of movement that I typically do. It's one of the best. So this isn't exactly my best vlog or anything, but uh, at the same time, it's my first vlog, so uh, not bad considering. Uh, I'm, I'm just basically gonna end it here and uh, just hopefully plan to get more vlogs out if I can and maybe some other type of videos. Another video I'm thinking about doing is a video going over my diet uh, a little more in detail. I have a pretty like basic routine that I typically go through and I'll go over that and I recently recorded a video of me binge eating so I, I might also make a video on the experience of binge eating, something that can happen to you when you are in a uh, calorie deficit for a really long time. Just something that happens, not really a big deal. Uh, it's actually a unique experience and uh, 
something to talk about for sure for anybody who's ever going to do calorie deficiency for an extended period of time. So, uh, interruption there with a phone call. If you notice, that's the uh, Gatsu song for uh, Berserk. How does my ringtone? Um, but yeah, and, and uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to show a little clip of me uh, working on driving a drone that I'm going to be using uh, to help uh, make a uh, film that I'm making with my brother. I'm being the director of photography. So yeah, it's a post-apocalyptic post film uh, called Edge of Chaos, and I might feature it in my videos at some point. Well, well I'm featuring uh, drone footage of it, uh, test footage, but yeah. So uh, if you guys like the video, uh, give it a like. If you don't, give it a dislike. and. Uh, see you around.